Hello all and welcome to a new video. In this video I will share my thoughts about the Gigabyte WinForce 4080 Super. I have the V1 and there is a V2 as well. These versions look the same, have the same specs and size, but some say that the V2 has a higher power limit. Now, as you can see on the screen, I'm showing what we have in the box. Alongside the GPU, we have the power connector and the screws for the provided anti-sag bracket. When it comes to the bracket, I haven't used it, as I'm usually testing GPUs and this will make it harder to switch them easily, as this one seems to be attaching to the case, I think. This GPU is not that heavy, so this will do just fine. Now, let's check the overclocking capabilities. In MSI Afterburner, I increase the power limit to the max, in this case plus 12%, increase the GPU clock by 260 MHz and the memory speed by close to 1250 and see if it's stable well in F123. And as we can see, it crashed. Back to the drawing board. After trial and error, I found that these are the settings that works for this card. Next, let me show you the performance gains in a few games, side by side, and after, I will display all the results in a table, so it's easier to visualize it. Also, while we are here, consider subscribing to the channel to help you grow. In this chart I added only the average results. As we can see, the performance gains are marginal, but we have some. Though, looking at Cyberpunk 2077, that difference can be attributed to margin of error, as the difference between the default result 69.1 and the overclocked one 70.7 could not be felt, at least by me. In F123, we jump from 148 to 153, in Avatar from 110 to 116, in Assassin's Creed from 161 to 170, in Horizon Zero Dawn from 218 to 200. 132 in the last of us part 1 from 103.8 to 110 and last but not least in total war pharaoh from 87.5 to 93 averaging all game results at 1440p the performance increase is above 5 percent more than the performance difference between the 4080 and the 4080 super when it comes to the undervolting capabilities, these settings are stable as I tested them in Warzone. You all can't imagine how many times I got DirectX error trying to find a stable core voltage for the overclock. What we get is lowering the power without losing any performance, as it can be seen here in Cyberpunk 2077 in the side by side run. For those of you trying to find a core voltage that can stand with your overclock, I will start from a core voltage value of 1.020 and slowly increase the voltage voltage until the car can be stable. This can be a long process. To check the GPU's thermals, I use Furmark in order to push the car to draw as much power as possible. After a bit more than 5 minutes, I used Hardware Info 64 to log the readings for 10 minutes in order to compare the default and overclocked settings. And here are the results. In the top left of the readings you have the power, on the top right you have the fan speed, on the bottom left we have the GPU temperature, on the bottom right we have the GPU hotspot. The red line represents the default settings, the green one, the OC one. We can see that while OC'd, 
the fan spin at around 80%. We have a GPU temperature of around 80 degrees and we have a GPU hotspot above 92. These are not alarming temps and the fans, even though they spin quite fast, are quiet to my surprise. The default profile handles the thermals without breaking a sweat, so no beefy cooler is required to tame the GPU. Keep in mind the ambient temperature as in the summer these GPU temps may go up. Now let me share my thoughts. I think that this Gigabyte Winforce 4080 Super is a good card, but I don't think it's for everybody, as it doesn't have RGB and I know for some this is important. The standout feature of this model is the cutout to the back of the GPU, is the place where the power connector is found. By going this route, this avoids the possibility of bending the cable on a steep angle in most cases. The bending should not be close to the connection as it can be seen on the screen now and as recommended by Seasonic. This route that Gigabyte chose to go with prevents this issue from happening, but this makes the card a bit longer as the cable will stick out from the back and you will need more clearance. And another thing that I like is that this card is not fake and although the fans spin fast, these are silent, at least to me. Oh and it has dual BIOS as well, as you can see here. This Gigabyte Winforce model is a no frill straight to the point graphics card that does its job quite well and it should not be overlooked. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.